So I'm here right. with Petite Princess Eve. You may have seen her on Fake Hub, Brazers, Fake Taxi. How are you doing today? I'm fine. As I told you, just a little bit tired because <laughs> I didn't have a good sleep too much on my mind. But I'm good overall, yeah. I'm always good. Happy. Yeah, so you're in the, <laughs> U- the UK, right? Do you know what? Do you know what it is? I get these many, many bloody scammers calls from India. <laughs> so someone just rang me. I can get up to ten or twenty calls every day. It's sick. Yeah, like um, in the United States, you can get money for that. Like you know, if you're getting like you know, uh, so many different scamming calls, you can you can file like a lawsuit or like a uh, <laughs> it's against the law. Like- <laughs> When I'm going to be, just before I go to Thailand, I may just change my phone number, just get it disconnected, and that's that will be done. Definitely. Um, did you did you grow up in the UK? No, no. So um, I live here for eighteen years now. Um, I'm Lithuanian, but recently I found out from my family that I've got quarter of Polish and I've got a Russian Jewish as well. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit of oh. a mix. <laughs> so, so you didn't really know your ethnicity growing up? Well, I always thought I'm just Lithuanian, you know, but like maybe four or five years ago, I just did this thing just for my own curiosity, this DNA test, uh, whatever it was, for a couple of couple hundred pounds. And it came up like telling me I've got this and that. Um, and I don't go back home often because I've seen everything over there so I'm like I chosen to travel elsewhere just to travel around the globe yeah and then I haven't been home for a few years I went back home in May this year and I said to my family I said listen I did this DNA test like a few years ago he said oh yeah my mom's like oh yeah my father was Polish I was like what well you never told me this (laughs) so that's the story about it so yeah so you grew up in Lithuania yeah for the first 18 years and when I finished high school at 18 in June October I was here okay uh what what was it like growing up in Lithuania oh oh wow yeah life is wild in Eastern Europe I had wild 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 west life (laughs) it's crazy Eastern Europeans are nuts Right. Uh, like, you know, were you always like, you know, a sexual person? Was I always what? A sexual person? Like, you know, like, uh, you know, do you feel like, you know, and stuff like growing up in Lithuania, like influence, like what is the culture like? Do people like, you know, no. embrace, like, sexuality? Um, or- no. I mean, I'm interested in doing things, but um, back in the day when I was still back home, I was really young. So all of those things I'm doing today was not on my mind just yet. <laughs> so uh what what were you what were you doing? What were this what was like in, in that period of time, like what were you doing? You mean when I was still back home? Yeah. I was just going to high school, just <laughs> as a kid, growing up, going wild, doing this and that, you know, just like all of those normal things. And so uh so uh what was like your first boyfriend? Huh. My first boyfriend. Well, like, he, well, the first one I had, like, proper one, I was 16, nearly 16, I think. Or I was I 16 when I met him. He was a bit older. At the time, he was 21. And I was with him until I left back home when I was 18. And uh, why why did you leave uh, Lithuania? Right, that's a good question. So basically, I was with this 21-year-old boyfriend, yeah, and for a few years, and it was just going downhill, you know, and then I've met somebody else, and oh. that somebody went to England to join his brother, and then he was like, come over. So it's like, yeah, okay, just finished high school in June. And then I was on my way to to England. <laughs> so, you, so you ditched the the first guy who was like, I guess, kind of like your first love. Yeah, the- because, yeah, I did. Yeah, because it was <laughs> it, it was bad. It was okay. not nice. 
Uh, was was it a, was it a better choice though? The guy in England. He was from Lithuania as well, but he just went to UK first. Then I joined him. He was interesting. We was together for about eight nine years. Um, so it's like you know, at at that age, I didn't have much experience just yet to compare. So right. with this person, what I can say today, I've learned a lot. It was bad as hell because you used to be weird and controlling. But, you know, like you get together with somebody when you're young and then you start growing up, you start like wondering, oh, wow, this is not right. This is not good. But whatever happened, I am grateful for that thing as well because I've learned a lot from it. I've grown up as a person, like a lot. Yeah. Most, most definitely. So like how, like though, do you go from like being in like, you know, uh, a committed relationship for, you know, uh, nine years to sex work? Um. So after that relationship ended, um, he used to um, still bother me quite, quite, quite a lot. I was at the time actually in Ireland. I was like, you know what? This is wrong. Like, I just can't get away from this. I'm going to go back to the UK. And I just packed my things one day, booked the ticket one way, which was, it was funny because it was 13th as well on Friday. I left, never turned back, and I think I've done the best thing ever. Now, how did I get, oh, how did I get into sex thing, yeah? So um, when I was in England, again, back from Ireland, um, I met this guy, I used to date, this was about going on for three, four months, maybe. And then I was like, oh, I don't like it. So the guy I used to see, he was professional, like bodybuilder. He's into, um, what was he was doing? Jiu-Jitsu, was it MMA or something? When we met, he told me, he said, yeah, I do this and that. And then I do something else, but I'm going to tell you later. And then one day he goes at me, oh, do you know what? I'm, I'm actually an, 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 you know, a guy that does this and that. You should go and check this out. So he actually got me into it yeah <laughs> that, that's awesome like um you know uh were you like you know uh pretty open to the idea initially or like you know was it like you know something that you had like a little bit of like you know reluctance um I was like I was curious going in it but you know what because I'm very strict I've got my own way the way I do things so I'm always in control. So whatever I do in the industry, people may think whatever they want. I don't give a fuck, to be honest. But like, I make the experience enjoyable for me, you know? So it's like, I'm picky, you know? If I've got opportunity to be picky, I'm gonna go and do that. You know, as I said, just because I'm doing this and that does not mean I have to go and meet you know, like bloody anybody and do whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I do it my own way. I've got my own rules, how this is going to go, because I like to enjoy things. I am very honest person, so I don't want to ruin somebody else's experience at the end of the day, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> so far it's been okay. It's good. That's, that's good. What was your uh, first scene? Oh, you mean talking about movies, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That was actually pretty interesting, you know, because I actually didn't know I had a Twitter account. So I started wondering, you know what? I do things and like so many people do the same things. And I was like, you know what? How about I'm gonna go and put my face on there? Do you like porn, you know? And at the time I on like I had to go on Twitter and let's say I, the first people I worked with was um, Fake Taxi, yeah. So I logged in to your Twitter and I saw that I do have an account apparently. So on my Twitter it says that I'm joined in 2015, but I've not used that, that profile, that account until 2019, okay. you know? So I logged in and I said, like, I'm gonna go message Fake Taxi. I like, I had at the time maybe 10 followers only on the Twitter. I went and messaged them. They responded immediately, said, yeah, we want to work with you, you know? Yeah, we want to work with you. So that's how it all started. Wow, that's uh, incredible and stuff that you were able to use, like, social media to, like, leverage, like, you know, opportunity. And, uh, you know, you have, like, you know, basically, like, you know, come 
uh, up like really quick. Like, you know, and stuff like lustfell.com named you like, you know, yeah. uh, one of the top. Can you tell uh, me again? Hmm? They, they, they named you tell one me of again the, about, yeah, about that thing. Okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was talking to you yesterday on the live and like, you know, yeah. I guess you didn't, you didn't know that you were named one of the top uh, newcomers in adult films. So congratulations. No, I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, because they said, like, you know, that you've been building up your, you know, your fan base, you know, really quickly. And like, you know, like a lot of people and stuff and everything, like love your scenes, uh, like, you know, particularly like, you know, uh, I've seen like, you know, the scenes you did for Brazers and Fake Taxi and like, you know, uh, a lot of people well, just Brazers like Brazers was pretty interesting because so I went to film Fake Taxi. Well, I didn't know at the time. They already, before even asking me, they booked me to do Fake Hub, Fake 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 paintballing scene. So when I arrived to film, they're like, yeah, you come down a few weeks later because we booked you for fake paintballing, you know? And I was like, oh, okay. And then like while doing that, I met obviously quite a few other people, but all of those people, I was just a baby in 2019, like it was July. Um, I was just a baby because I, I didn't know nothing. I was like, I don't know how things work. And I was just excited being there. And I spoke to people. There was somebody on the set. Um, I heard actually other people talking about that girl. They were like, oh, my God, she did brothers recently. And I, I said, well, how did you get into it, you know? She said, oh, my days, it took me seven years. I keep asking, asking until, like, they agreed to film me. So it's like, wow, it's bloody difficult, you know? And I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. So I went on my Twitter, messaged them. And then I remember it was Saturday. I was like, I had the nap in the middle of the day. Um, I wake up and I'm like, I get the message back. And they're like, yeah, do you want to come down next month and uh, do a scene with Tiny D? I was like thinking, I rang my friend and said, listen, somebody's scamming me. Because like many people told me it takes sometimes people two to seven years to get in it, you know, and this is why I was like, somebody's scamming me, you know, this can be real, but it was. So I went there, we did that scene, and then I remember it was released on, um, so we were filming in October, it went online 5th of December, and it was just literally after New Year, it was like 4th or 5th of January. I do get a message back from him saying, you know, it was good, do you wanna come down and do like, round two with Jordi. I was like, whoa. I said, yeah, no problem. I was not expecting none of that. So a lot of people told me it takes a long time. And I was like, pretty surprised that I've got into it so quick. And when people watch my scenes, they're like, whoa, wow, it's your act is really good. You know, I've never went to acting school. I've never did no drama classes. But the way I am over there while I'm filming, I get involved in my head into that character and i just believe it's real i just go for it you know yeah, yeah it's just kind of natural thing to me that's one of the reasons and stuff that you've been able to develop like you know such a massive fan base is because like people see that you have like you know I such a passion so yeah you have such a passion for the your work though like um you know um how, how much of like you know what you do like you you would say like is is acting you know like when you yeah. I do enjoy it, you know. I enjoy to me, it's porn, it's not porn, whatever it is, being on camera, have your own script, all of that big team around you and that, that's what I like, you know. So I guess it's just I've got something in me, you know, that I'm good for these things. I don't even know how to explain it, to be honest. But I, yeah, I do enjoy it a lot, yeah, when I'm doing it. As long as people in the team they're good people, they're normal people, because people need to make me feel comfortable. So, you know, because I had a little bit of bad experience with somebody, I'm not gonna say who that was, but, you know, people like need to feel, make you feel comfortable. So as I said, just, this is why I will perform good for the cameras, it's gonna be good for the viewers and that, you know what I mean? So, yeah. What was uh, the bad? Right, it's, it's done, eh? What was the bad experience? Like, you know, uh, you don't have to name names, but like what what kind of happened that made you feel It like was weird. It was weird as hell because mm -hmm. the cameraman was, um, I don't know, listen, 
I've seen some things in the kitchen. There was drugs involved. They were hiding from me, but I could tell from people's behavior, you know. And the cameraman was like up and down, up and down with his moods. And he was like one minute talking too nice. The next minute he was shouting at me. It was just going through all day like this. When I had enough, I took my luggage, dropped it on the kitchen floor, said, yo, I'm going. I'm going. I'm done with this shit. You know, you right. can't. You know, if you like, it looks like somebody's like hates people, hates women, whatever. And I said to him, I said, listen, yo, if you don't like people, you should not be working like around us doing this because all you do make people miserable. That's wrong. You have to make feel people happy on the set so they will perform like a lot better, you know? No, a, a hundred percent. Like I, I imagine like, you know, that like, you know, some of those like scenes that you see, like, it doesn't seem like, you know, that like women are like necessarily having any fun and like, you know, yeah. there's, like, you know, talk of like, you know, like, what are you, what are your thoughts on like, you know, some of the more like brutal scenes, particularly in, in adult film? I'm not really into that. <laughs> As I say to some people, I enjoy what I do in that industry, but I'm not for everybody. Everybody's not for me. If you've got problem with that, that's your problem. I get things like that. And just because I'm in the industry, as I said, it doesn't mean that anybody can message me. I'm just going to jump, go jump and run and do things with anyone and everyone. That's not the way it works in my life, you know? Definitely. Uh, d people do have that perception of like a lot of adult film stars that, yeah, cause they, you know, they are sheep, like as, as we say, they, their brain only goes one way. We don't see nothing else and we don't understand it because they're not capable, you know, simple. What's the best way for a guy though, like, you know, who is trying to approach, you, you know, to slide into the inbox? Oh, I get loads. I get loads of different kinds of people um, want to do this and that. They want to do content. I get weird DMs from uh, all of the, obviously all of these scammers, you know, offering me to you just want my money. But, you know, I wasn't born yesterday. I had very interesting life. So I know more than other people, which is good, you know, so I protect myself. But I get all sorts. I get people, they get mad at me. Sometimes I lose my shit. I get mad at people because, like, they will DM me and they won't leave me alone or they will send me 20 bloody messages or, and then they will send me question mark, question mark if I'm not responding. I'm like, yo, listen, don't make me feel like I owe you shit, yeah? I right. respond when I want. You ain't my husband. Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I don't have to explain myself to you at the end of the day, you know? I get all sorts. I get happy. I get crazy. I get whatever. You can only imagine, you know? Sometimes I tell, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I tell somebody to F off, you know? Or the, mo the, the most DMs I hate when people send me one word, hi. I'm like, yo, what do you want to say to that? So we're going to play like a kindergarten game, some shit, yeah? Hi, hi. How are you? How are you? Now I'm not, I don't do that. You want to talk to me? No problem. I'm very approachable person, you know, but speak to me proper. Don't send me hi. I'm not looking and thinking, what, what do you want? <laughs> I do you know what I mean. I find it really strange, you know? Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, there's a lot of weirdos on the internet. I think like, you know, I, I oh, do, yeah. uh, do you have, have you ever had to block anyone? Oh yeah, <laughs> almost every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. You know, a lot. Of, a lot of people like you. I know, look any person that sends me a dick pic because I've seen enough dicks. I know what it looks like, so I don't need to look at yours. You know. <laughs> right. Right. I'm like, not going to sit here and get involved in some sex chat or some shit. You know, it's not going to happen. Yeah, like I, I never understood that. And like a lot of guys think that's like the lead off, you know, separate that. I'm just gonna send her my dick pic, even with like girls that aren't important. Yeah. I think that's crazy as hell. Like, you know, it's really bold. <laughs> There's lots of fucking crazy people out there, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you don't know? I'm, I'm a bit more crazy than they are. <laughs> I'm not gonna deal with you. <laughs> Most definitely. Um do you you're known for like being small, you know, very your name's petite. So, uh, like, yeah. you know, uh, well, how tall are you? Four foot seven. Definitely. You're, you're tiny. Uh, like, you know, uh, 
is does that create like you know any challenges or do you feel like you know that's like it creates like a a, a special niche for you in the adult film industry well i think so yeah because like proportionally i am normal built i'm not like um dwarf or anything speaking about that by the way a work for few people then then they went online and um, posting videos like our content and they're like calling me dwarf and midges i'm like yo listen that is a disability i'm not fucking disabled yeah no doctors told me that i am why you're putting like that label on me number one number two is disgusting number three what people are gonna think about you talking about people like like you know that way that's just sick or there was one dude that um like there was some involvement doing some work but we never worked me and him together and then he was using my face to like post videos and he was calling me a dwarf i'm like yo dude you're a man you're just just above five foot and you're calling me a fucking dwarf <laughs> how sick is that i think that word should never been used pub publicly of any producer's mouth or whatever that shit is because it's wrong you know what i'm saying it's not normal and it sounds sick and it just looks wrong you know what i mean yeah like um it's definitely like politically incorrect you know um you know there are uh like you know uh little people in in the adult film industry you know uh one of these adult film performers, I bring it up because he brought up like, you know, the ideas of dwarves. There's this, this girl named uh, Kylie Monroe. I don't know if you heard about her, but she like recently no. committed, she committed suicide, you know, and uh, like, you know, I was wondering like, you know, is like being an adult film performer, like how do you, you know, manage your mental health? Because, you know, there's so much cyber bullying. I imagine you deal with a lot of things in your own personal life. And if somebody wants to bully me, I'm going to tell them to just fuck off your joke. Who you think you're talking to? Have you looked yourself in the mirror and shit? Like, nah, I, you know, I'm quite a tough person mentally. The way I was brought up and the experience that I had in my life. I'm very strong mentally. I'm in control. have to be, you know, this is just, I guess, I've got that sort of quality to be that way. So nobody bothers me. I don't get involved with bullies, you know what I'm saying? Like... I've heard like people sometimes approach me and say, oh, like some people talking this and that about you. So to protect myself and my mental health, I never, ever, I don't go, I don't read, I don't respond because it's just weirdos, negative people, they're no shit. Mm -hmm. And the way they come across what they say is just fucked up. And I'm not going to be in that circle playing those games. I am not. I don't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? My life is good. I'm good. I do what I want, when I want. You know, you think you know something. Yeah, well, good luck to you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just look fucked. <laughs> so I just keep away from that shit. I'm, I'm never going to get involved well with no bullshit. Never. So, no. because if I will, if I will, that will bother me. So don't let that happen. Man, I, I love your attitude, you know, because it's like you're so, like, uh, direct and so no-nonsense. Yeah, because... Like, uh, it's, that's that's the best way to go, you know. So I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting their time. And you have to be like, I've got an honest person. Honesty means you respect somebody. So I do respect people. Actually, I'm one of the most probably kindest people you can ever meet. But if you do me wrong, guess what? I'm going to be the worst fucking nightmare, you know, because I was brought up that way. If somebody does you wrong, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Definitely. Uh, one of the things fans love about you is the fact that you uh, have tattoos like how, how many tattoos do you have you know what i've counted them before i've, I've forgotten now <laughs> don't know my first two tattoos i've was i've got done when i was 15 years old and my friend that i'm still in touch today yeah mm -hmm. he just come out at the time out of youth's institution he was like locked up he come out and he had this machine little machine built it's like a pen with a little motor it's like yo do you want to do that yeah let's go <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what i've done and then later in in life like i started getting a bit more done um why i don't know i just like them but i would never get too much 
I'm never gonna cover my chest up. I'm never gonna go up my neck because I believe women, we've got, you know, that body. So there is areas that have to be left clean because if you cover them with tattoos, you won't see what you wanna see anymore. It's gonna be just pictures, just like drawings, you know what I mean? No, 100%. Yeah, like, um, I love your ink. You know what I mean? I feel like it's not too much. Like, I do think, like, sometimes and stuff, you know, like, when they start going, I think, like, when people talk and get the face tattoos, that's when it's way too much. Like, the face tattoos, I think, are are, are way too much. I yeah, think guess like, what? The ones that get face face tattoos or above the eyebrow and shit, usually, it's like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? What, what drugs are you taking? Because <laughs> usually, if you get something on the face, to most of them, it's like, fuck or whatever you know what i'm saying it's like why would you want to walk around like this you know what i mean you go to the streets what example you're putting out there you know you're surrounded by young people as well like kids and that you know what i'm saying they see that and you're gonna draw that picture to them like oh you know go get the dash like what <laughs> that's not right you know uh so like what's your your plans for your adult film career like you know um what are, what are you planning for in the future? Um, I don't know. The only plans I've got right now, so I should be doing um, a video clip in a rap, like a, I should be doing rap in, like in a rap. I don't want to see with who, whatever, just yet, you know. But I'm going to go next month and do a um, a clip with rappers. Now, after that, if some production company wants to film, they're more welcome to speak to me. I see what they want, what they want me to do, how much they're paying, where they are, you know, and I'll think about it. But I'm just like thinking of building up my social media, like um, YouTube, um, like TikTok. I've just actually started like uploading just yesterday, you know, mm. on TikTok. And then I'm planning to go to Thailand in April, May for about six to 12 months. And I'm going to travel around the whole Asia, like Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia, doing as well, like doing content of my own, you know, pictures, videos, doing interviews as well with people, doing podcasts maybe and that. This is what I want to do. So I'll be doing like normal things, which is YouTube, and then I'll be doing my OnlyFans and that, which I have, you know, but... I'm going to be doing all of that content, like a lot more when I go there, because it's, over there's a lot, a lot of nice environment and you can do so many, many nice things, you know, so much good content in there. So that's my, that's what, that's what I'm going for. That's my plans. Asia for six to 12 months, maybe more, I don't know, you know, and I, I will, I will smash it over there, to be honest. That's what, that's what I want to do. Definitely. I do feel like, you know, that, because you talk about like being in control that like, you know, platforms like OnlyFans, like give you more control over your career, like where you don't have to be reliant on production companies. Do you see yourself like, you know, focusing more on your OnlyFans content opposed to like, you know, working with like big production companies? Like I don't mind still working with the pro production companies and that, but it's just like, how can I say this? I had interesting couple of years so i'm just fed up with things i want to go to asia is sunny all the time i've been there before many times in asia i've been in malaysia many times i've been in thailand i've not been to vietnam indonesia just yet i've been i've been to saudi arabia and i just know how nice this is over there so i just want to like do a lot more over there rather than here and because it's so pretty over there i just want to do my own thing and like upload it you know to, to show people like oh you know yeah this is what I want to do and hopefully my social media and everything grows even more so I want to be filthy rich one day okay. and do something like helping people you right. know like do like a charity thing maybe open a soup kitchen or something yeah that's, that's beautiful. Like, you know, I think like, you know, uh, if you ever do, I will definitely donate to your uh, charity, man. I, 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 I want to do those things, <laughs> trust me, because look, like now when I see things on YouTube, it's like, wow, you know, it's fucked up. 
there's lots of people that need help and like I like to do that actually um support local homeless shelters and charities and that so I do quite quite, quite a lot of that but I want to be the person that's going to open that sort of it's not business really you know sort of thing and yeah I want to be involved definitely I like to help people because um I just care you know at the end of the day and I don't know when I do something good it makes my day it, it just makes my head to run better and I can sleep better knowing I've done something good you know it feeds it feeds me in a good way you know if I may say that yeah yeah that's, that's beautiful like you know I think like you know there's a stigma like you know with like adults it's a karma. I don't believe in no religion I've got no religion because it's all bullshit I think you know, it's been made up to brainwash people, get them, manipulate them, control them. I'm not what well, I'm not somebody that you can control, you know, that manipulate whatever. And I believe the only thing I believe is karma. So okay. and trust me, it happened to me a few yeah. times when I did something nice, it's a small thing, and then the next day I end up somewhere in the middle of fuck knows where, and then somebody pops up and like does nice things for me too, you know. But you don't, so you don't believe in a higher power though at all? Like, you know, where does karma no, come? <laughs> no, I only believe in karma and I believe in myself. I don't believe in no miracles, no Jesus, it's nothing because at the end of the day, listen, let's, let's not get delusional. Where is that thing now? Where are those miracles now? Huh. You know, look at, look, look at what's going on with churches and that, you know, like people go, they give their money, whatever, but they live shit life. So what do these people do? How do they live? You understand? You know? I, I think miracles still happen today. I really believe, like, you know, uh, that they do. Like, you know, you hear these stories of people being cured, you know, like it, they don't necessarily happen for everyone. And I don't know necessarily the reason. I, I'm, I'm a Christian. I believe That's in Jesus Christ. Have to prove me that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I believe, like, I believe in things like oh that I can touch, I can see, do you know what I mean? Like I don't believe in stories that like, show me. I need to see that. I need to touch it, it, you know what I mean? I'm be, very yeah, be, person. It has to be tangible for you. No, I could understand that. Like, you know, um, there's like, you know, great stories in the Bible and stuff where they talk about like, you know, the story of doubting Thomas you know, who actually was like with Jesus and then like after he was crucified, he wanted to, you know, touch you know, the holes in his hands. Like, you know, that's what that story is kind of about. But um I think it's like some bit, bit like Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> fantasy land, fantasy world, you know. Yeah, look, there is this books that people read those books, the stories and that, but at the end of the day, look, we don't know because you've not been there. You've not seen it for yourself. So if I've not been there, I've not seen it for myself, I'm not, I'm not going to believe in it. You can tell me whatever you want. I'll be like, yeah, good story. Tell me another one. You know, um, you brought up a, a interesting point. The Matrix, you know, there's this guy uh, like, you know, a lot of people listen to from the UK. His name's Andrew Tate. You know, he's part of the red pill community. I was wondering, like, if you had any thoughts about like, you know, like the red pill community. I don't even know what's that. So it's like basically like, you know, like what you were saying, how like, you know, the, the government tries to control, you know, our thoughts, you know, like they they they've created this matrix. And like, you know, a lot of ideas and stuff, everything that don't necessarily make sense. And like, you know, he talks about like, you know, different aspects of like society, you know, um, not being like, you know, uh, like, Sounds like some sort of cone, like a cone artist that <laughs> wants to get people's money straight away. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. If, you, if, if he's in it and he's like, yeah, sounds like some bullshit right away. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny uh like you know and stuff i i love your realness and stuff everything like you know uh you're, you're super authentic um there's you know, this- always, i'm always gonna be way you know why because a lot of people pretend to be who they are not and guess what the truth comes out one day all the time so i don't want to pretend some shit you know what i mean because then I'm going to look like a clown one day. Why would I want that at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's society, though, like, you know, a lot of people and stuff don't necessarily have, like, a, a high respect for, like, sex workers or people who do sex work. You know, uh, has there been any, any, like, repercussions from doing sex work in your real life? Um, It's not for everyone, obviously. It's not for everybody, you know. I The way I am is, like, 
I'm not bothered what people that I don't know think about me or if they judge me. At the end of the day, they never contributed into my life. They don't pay my bills. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't do shit for me. Why would I care what you fuck you think about me at the end of the day? Do you know what I mean? And if you want to be judgmental, that tells me a lot about you, you know? So as I say, if you haven't got anything nice to say, keep it for yourself. Because look, whatever you think about me, that does not bother me because you don't know me, you know? You what, don't know me. What, what about... And you don't a call for me, so... What about, wow. your, what about your personal relationships, though? Because, like, I mean, you know, like, everybody, like, you know, necessarily isn't on board. I imagine, like, you've met some people or, like, you know, dated some people and stuff. It does, do people have to be accepting of the fact yeah. that you're a sex worker? Like, are you date? You know what I mean? I don't need much because I am looking for no specific thing, but somebody to be on the same level, mentality level as me, having the same goals and whatever. So that is very difficult to find. Now, people that don't like what I do, we will never meet and go on a date because guess what? It ain't for me, it ain't for you. So I'm not going to get involved. No, I understand that. But like- uh... Also, I don't need to depend on anybody. I don't need to right. be with somebody to make me happy. You know, I'm completely happy on my own. It's like, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, just being uh, an individual. That's cool. Like, um, I think like, you know, that it's important to have like self-reliance in life you know you can't be like you know necessarily codependent on other people but like you know at the same point like even like me i can handle like, being alone that's what i'm gonna tell you i can handle being on my own so other people be can't i can i would rather be alone than be with somebody that doesn't suit me i go there was this quote that is the same i used to be scared of being alone now i'm scared of being surrounded by the wrong people that's why I'm okay being on my own. Right, yeah, because it's, it's way worse to be around the wrong people than to be alone. Because, like, uh, at least when you're you're alone, you I feel like, you know, you can think things out, like, you know, and what's best for you. And, like, you know, relationships require, like, a lot of compromise sometimes, even if... Yeah, it's a hard work. At the end of the day, like... The way I think is, I don't need to be with necessarily with somebody to, you know, make me happy and feel good about my life. You can go and do things to get satisfied, you know, in the different angles, you know what I'm saying? Do things to feel completed, like, you know what I mean? And feel happy as a human being, but still be on your own, you know? So you don't have to be with somebody to be happy. You can go have a, you know, this, this, this and that from different people and you can just be as satisfied as anybody that's got like perfect marriage, perfect life for a long time or whatever that is, you know, perfect boyfriend and that. Yeah. Uh, Petite Princess Eve, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm excited you. to see what you have coming up in uh, the new year in 2023. Like, you know, let it be uh, even better than 2022. And like, you know, girl, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. You, you are absolutely like, you know, a phenomenal talent in the adult films. And Thank I you. appreciate you. I appreciate you saying that. That's so nice to hear that, to be honest. You most know, de most definitely.